Hello and welcome to Growing Pains, how to take your business to the next level. Today on our show, we have Mr. Robert Gatewood, MBA, President and CEO of Gatewood Marketing Incorporated. And he's also a professor at Prince George's Community College. And I'm your host, Carl Brown, the Executive Director of the Center for Minority Business Development. Hello, Robert. How are you doing? Good morning, Carl. I'm doing great, and I'm happy to be here on Growing Pains. Thank you. Thank you. Today, we're going to discuss how to develop a marketing plan, why a small business needs a marketing plan, and how to do research for your marketing plan. So if we could jump right in, how do you develop a marketing plan? Well, I, was, I listened to the title Growing Pains, and a marketing plan is actually a good way to minimize some of those pains that come with growing a business. Exactly. So it's like a, uh, let's look at it as a road map. If I decided to leave here today, going down to California, I'd probably get there eventually without a map, but a good marketing plan serves as a map. It's a road map that guides you to where you're trying to go, and it also helps you uh, avoid some of those missteps that are likely to happen in your marketing strategy. And also, if you're going to be dealing with investors or uh, t other types of stakeholders, a good marketing plan serves as a good resume for your business on where you're trying to go with the business. Great. Now, what, what are some of the categories or sections of a marketing plan so that our listeners and our viewers would know what it is that they would have to develop and how it has to look? Okay, well, let's look at the marketing plans. First of all, you, a marketing plan is going to help us help those marketing metrics sway your way. Like cost per acquisition, every customer has a cost. And so the marketing plan helps lower your cost per acquisition and it also extends the lifetime value of the customers. So you need those marketing metrics swaying in your favor and a marketing plan is a good way to get those metrics going in your way. Now, of course the marketing plan starts with good research and so research is a big pivotal part of the marketing plan itself. But there are other parts of the plan as well, like the executive summary. That explains the whole goals of the plan, where you're trying to go, what you're trying to accomplish. We're gonna talk about the management team. Is this team up to the task of implementing this plan? Things like your uh, competition. Who are you gonna be up against? And you can't ignore the competition. Now we like to think that we, we operate in a vacuum and some people say I'm gonna put my blinders on and not worry about the competition and what they're gonna do. But even if we don't do anything, we have to acknowledge that they exist. We have to look at our strategy. There are different types of strategies. You may have a strategy, for instance, that focuses on pricing. You may have a pricing strategy. I'm going to be the lowest guy in town. You may have a strategy of uniqueness. I'm going to do something that's very unique. So there's different types of strategy, and your strategy, of course, has to be part of this plan. Things like your pricing. Like you said, pricing is a very pivotal part. Pricing, am I going to be high? Am I going to be low? Am I going to be somewhere in the middle? Pricing, very important part of the plan. Then you get into other parts like your, uh, your budget. How much money am I going to have to spend on this plan? Because there will be a monetary requirement to execute the plan. And of course, your advertising, your promotions, things like that, you want to detail in the plan what type of advertising you're actually going to implement. Are you going to be doing uh, broadcast media, for instance? Are you going to be doing TV, radio? Are you going to be doing print media, social media, web strategy? All of these things have to be detailed in the plan, and the plan, once it's complete, you actually have a good roadmap on how to proceed and implement a good marketing strategy to bring in customers to get those marketing metrics swaying in your favor. Low, low acquisition of customer cost, long time value. Well, that sounds good. Now, our listeners need to know and our viewers need to know that it has to be detailed because it doesn't matter if it's just a cursory review of your business, but it has to be detailed and you have to tell a story. So when, you, when you're working with a client, what do you get from them? How do you help them develop their marketing plans? Well, you have to, it is a team effort and let's, let's take re research for instance. Now you can do, re there's a couple of types of research because this is where you can actually get involved. Let's say the primary research you can actually do yourself because people think research, they get intimidated, they're thinking test tubes and you know, labs and all this kind of stuff. Well, right. there may be some of that, but there's a primary type of research that the business owner himself or herself can actually implement. These are things like phone surveys, uh, mailing out letters, getting feedback. Uh, you can do uh, online surveys, uh, 
focus groups. So that's primary research that you can actually do yourself that doesn't cost you a lot of money. So, and then if you want to take it even further, then you can do, go to a secondary type of research. And that's where you involve other types of organizations, such as trade organizations, the Small Business Administration, uh, the SCORE veterans, things like that. People that have external information, uh, the Census Bureau, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, a now, wealth of information out there. Let me ask you, is it expensive conducting this research or is a lot of this information free and available? It's amazing how much you can get from just a phone call, sometime a, a self-addressed envelope with a stamp on it, uh, just to go out and find this information. Now some, of course, you can spend as much money as your budget will allow, but most small businesses, you have to understand, you're trying to keep your costs down you're trying to get off the ground, and you don't want to spend all your money before you get out of the starting gate. Right. So I said take advantage of the low-hanging fruit. There are many things that don't really cost you any money. Like I said, the, on, the primary things you can do yourself, you can bring in interns, you can bring in your, uh, your, your administrative staff. But when it comes to things like this secondary research, a lot of that information is also free. Now some companies, they decide to outsource it. So you may bring in a research firm that can actually do that for you. But most of the small businesses that I deal with they rather not do that, and I try to help them identify the sources that do not cost them any money. Now, there's one that I heard of recently at the Enoch Pratt Library in Baltimore. Right. Has a lot of business research available, and it's free. That's exactly right. And you can find that Pratt database online. Google, uh, not trying to promote Google, but it's a good way to go out here and find information. Just go to the uh, search engine and type in research, type in market research, and there's a wealth of information out there. Uh, Yahoo has a trade association within their database. So if you can just go out here and look for the free research, you can save yourself a lot, of a lot of time, a lot of money, and you can help move that ball down the road. Now again, why does a small business need a marketing plan? Well, you need a marketing plan because if you're out here trying to, you're gonna, first of all, you're gonna encounter some competition that you really never even thought about. And, and the biggest thing I think is that when you're starting to write that plan, you're gonna see some things that did not occur to you when this marketing was in this ethereal sense, when you're just thinking about it. It's like, and also there's this endorphin that kicks in that once you start it, once you start it, there's this overwhelming desire to finish. So when you put it in writing, it's a lot different than talking about it with your buddies or talking about it with your family and say, look, I'm gonna start this business. When you start putting it on paper, some things start to happen. Some things reveal themselves that you never thought about. It's going to be a plan. It's a blueprint. It's a map of where you're trying to go. Well, I can tell you, as a contract officer, it is imperative that a business knows where they're going to go and how they can service me as their client. Well, absolutely. When I come to a, if, if I'm a, uh, if you come into me offering your service, if I have a well thought out plan, it's going to reveal itself in our discussions, if we're talking about a particular project, it's so evident to somebody who's actually interacting with you if you have a plan or not. And you may not have it written on your face, but it's actually very evident. They don't have to know that you don't have a plan, but believe me, when you have it written down, it becomes so evident, it becomes concrete. You can rattle off numbers, you can talk about re research, you can talk about data, you can talk about plans, but you can't do these things when it's just up here. You gotta put it on paper, it has to be in writing. Exactly. And you know, the federal government, <clears throat> they want you to have a capability statement, so you might want to talk about that. Well, a capability statement really is almost exactly what it says. It's what your capability to perform the task that they're going after. So a capability statement is similar to a marketing plan, except it's more concise, it's more bridge, and it addresses your capabilities. It doesn't get into all the budgeting and things like that about who you are, but it talks about your capabilities as a contractor to fulfill that contract. So a good supplement, a good item to add along with your marketing plan as you're approaching contract is to have a good capability statement. Now I know a lot of banks, when you go for funding, they want to see your marketing and business plan. So why do you think many small businesses don't even bother to put one together? Well, uh, in a lot of things, it's lack of information. They don't realize the importance. Uh, bankers are very fond of business plans. Matter of fact, some won't even entertain your thought if you don't have some type of marketing plan put together. They want to see that you have actually put forth the effort, that you understand the marketplace, because the marketplace can be very unforgiving to the inexperienced and the unprepared. So what a marketing plan shows that at least you put forth the effort to try to mitigate your risk. Bankers and a lot of these organizations, they're about risk mitigation. 
putting together a good plan says to them, look, this person has done the work, they've done the due diligence, they're going to minimize the risk, therefore it's a less risk to me to lend them money. So when you're thinking about plans, don't just think about as the roadmap, but also thinking about the people who are going to have access to it, the people who need to see it, and where are you trying to go as an as a organization. Bankers, other stakeholders are very concerned about risk mitigation. A good business plan shows to them that you're about risk mitigation as well. Exactly, because you have your numbers right there. Your numbers are right there. And you can tell a banker when you are able and willing to pay them back. Well, not willing, but when you're able to pay them back based on your financial projections. That's right, because a part of the plan, a very important <laughs> part of the plan is financial projections. Your most plans will come like a three-year projection. You're saying, over oh, well, this course of time, this is what I'm going to make, this is what my marketing is going to produce, because it's all about return on investment. You're investing in marketing, and this is the return I expect to get for that investment. A marketing person or a banker who's looking at this, he said, this is what I, I, can, I can expect to get my money back because they've shown a pattern, a history. After year three or year two, they're going to start making money. They do a break-even analysis to show where that money is going to, where the money is going to start coming in. All, all of a sudden, the risk seems to have gone down. Now, another important part of a plan is the milestones. That's another right. thing that people look at when they're trying to determine if, uh, if you're sincere. Milestones actually time stamps. You're taking it out of this, like I said, ethereal thing now. You time stamp it. You're saying on day, on this day, I'm going to do this. I'm going to open my doors. I'm going to have a grand opening. I'm going to contact the media. My website is going up. You have it all laid out. It's time stamped, and it keeps you honest. All of a sudden, now you're not just talking. You actually have some dates to meet, some deadlines to meet. So milestones, very important part of the plan and it keeps you, keep that plan moving down the road so it doesn't stumble along the way. So if you're into, if you're into the uh, critical path method or the perks and understand you can't get from point A to point B, then you will understand the importance of a good milestone as a component of your marketing plan. Yeah, that's critical because as a banker, if I'm financing your company, I want to know when you're going to do certain things, and that's you know very critical to that. Uh, understanding that on this date you're going to have your website up, you're going to have your collateral ready, you're going to start um, opening your doors, you know, and, and it's critical that your customers also know your milestones as well. That's exactly right. Because if you're trying to go after an SBA loan, for instance, even though the SBA is backing the loan. It's actually an actual bank that's going to be lending you the money. Right. So those rules don't disappear just because they have the SBA backing. Those banks still want the same, they want to see the same things. They want to see that you're able to repay. They want to see that the risk is minimized. They want to see that you're serious, and they want to see those milestones. When is this going to happen? How are, these th where, how are this money going to be spent? Are you going to be using it wisely? So the marketing plan lays all of that out, and there are not, I can almost say, there are almost no banks that are going to lend you any money if you don't have some type of plan. Great. Now, hold that thought. We're going to come back in a few minutes and we're going to discuss branding versus marketing. Okay. This is Growing Pains. I'm your host, Carl Brown, with Robert Gatewood, MBA, President and CEO of Gatewood Marketing. We'll be right back. Develop skills to start a rewarding career with Prince George's Community College. Enjoy a challenging career in health sciences with a degree or certificate in such fields as nursing, emergency medical technician, health information management, nuclear medicine technology, radiography, and respiratory therapy. Each program is specifically designed for you to become a healthcare professional. For more information, please call 301-322-0731. Take charge of your future at Prince George's Community College. You can do this. The Center for Minority Business Development welcomes everyone to view bid procurement opportunities on their website. The address is www.cmbd.biz slash procurement dash opportunities dash bids. Or you can call CMBD at 301-583-5205. Welcome back to Growing Pains. I'm Carl Brown, your host for this segment. 
And along with us today is Mr. Robert Gatewood, MBA, President and CEO of Gatewood Marketing Incorporated. Robert, we were discussing before marketing, but let's tell our audience what marketing is. Right, we were talking about the marketing plan and its importance in the overall running of an organization, but let's talk about marketing in general. Marketing concept holds that you need to be better than your competition at identifying, then satisfying the needs and wants of target audiences. And target is the operative word. We have to be able to identify who is our audience, who is our target. And there are several ways to do that. The most common ways, and we mostly know about these, that's demographics. That's the different ages and races and so forth of the, of the audience. We have the uh, geographics. Where is my audience located? Is it a local audience? Is it an international audience? Uh, is it the psychographics? What's the lifestyle of the people? And then there are the uh, there's other types of ways of identifying who the target market is. So we have to identify our target market. So if you were actually selling a product, say a candle, you would then have to identify who your potential market is. That's exactly right. Because a, a, certain, a common mistake that a lot of people make, let's say geographics, for instance. People come to me all the time and say, look, hey, I, I have a new product. I want to advertise it on, on radio. Well, their audience may be coming from, 90% of their audience may be coming from the apartment across the street. Well, if they're doing a, a radio ad, most of their advertising is actually going to be wasted because their audience is actually locally. It's a geographic market that's a very short radius. So you have to understand who your audience is. It's going to save you a lot of money. Some of the fundamentals of marketing we can just go back to the four P's. The four P's, if you don't know anything else about marketing, you need to understand the four P's. First one being the product or the service. Make sure you have a product or service that people actually want and that there's a demand for. Pricing, make sure you price it in line with the audience you're trying to reach. In other words, you shouldn't be just trying to do the lowest price if your audience is expecting high quality. The other one is promotion. Make sure you're promoting it properly. Promotion, promotion, promotion. And promotion doesn't always mean running advertising. Right now, networking is a very big part of promotion. Networking, affiliates, one-on-one, -on -one, very popular now. This is getting more popular now with the internet. And then the other one is place. Place is another area that has shifted over the years. In the, in the old days, place meant I had a corner store or I had a, a, a office over here. Well, place now includes things like the internet. So the internet may be your place so play.